Hi, this is Ben Bristow, lead DJ instructor here at Point Blank Music College. And in the third of my three Record Box 3 tutorials, I'm going to show you a couple of different features, such as setting the hot cues, changing the settings on your USB stick so that you can have your own preferences when you load it up on a CDJ, and also how to set and analyze the key of your tracks. So this track's been analyzed, and if I want to set some hot cues on it, Basically, I've got two different ways of doing that. I've got these A, B and C buttons here underneath the track player. So if I play the track and press a hot cue, it will simply set a hot cue in the track where I pressed it. Also, if I had the quantize option ticked, then it means that those cue points are going to snap to the grid markers. So it means you can't really get them out of time as long as your grid is in the right place. So if I want to get rid of a hot cue, I can literally just delete it from here or I could have actually just pressed it up here under this hot cue menu so it's the same thing basically you've got 10 different slots for either cue points or loops but you've got an additional three hot cues so the difference being that when you press a hot cue button on the CDJ it actually jumps to that point and plays rather than just playing when you hold the button down like with the cue points so again if I'm playing the track and I set one up here just by pressing A I can re-trigger that, just even in record box. So different CDJs have different levels of kind of quantizing with those hot cues. So if you're on CDJ 2000 Nexus decks and you've got the quantize button active on the deck itself, when you trigger those hot cues, it will only let you trigger them according to where the grid markers are. Whereas if you were on CDJ 2000s, they don't quantize the hot cues to the grid markers, so you can be a bit more versatile with them in that you can trigger them very quickly. Obviously, if you wanted to do quick triggering of hot cues, you'd probably turn off quantize on the CDJ 2000 Nexus decks because then it would allow you to trigger them wherever. But these can help you stay in time if uh, you're not able to kind of hit them accurately. So it's also worth mentioning that you might want to check your preferences. So if you go to the CDJ hot cue settings, this option here, prepare hot cue auto load for CDJ use, that means any track you load in that has hot cues saved, it will automatically load those hot cues in for you onto the CD deck. So that can be irritating if you want to retain hot cues from other tracks and have them kind of split across different tracks. So it depends whether you want them to automatically load or not as to whether you tick that box really. Personally, I wouldn't have that on because it means I can individually load in the cue points I want for each track or several different tracks. So you can also save loops to the hot cue buttons. So if I set a loop using in and out here, If quantize is on, it will also snap those loop in and out points to that grid. And while a loop is active, if I press on one of the hot cue buttons, it will save that loop to the hot cue button. So you can see here it's shown up as yellow and it's got this loop icon next to it. So that distinguishes between a loop and a hot cue point, which appears green, whereas loops appear yellow. So if I go back to my settings up here, if I click on CDJ, these settings under my settings can basically, you can tailor what the deck does when you load up your USB stick. So you can change it. This is related to the actual CDJ. If you had it plugged in via record box, you can set the settings on the deck itself, but you can actually change these settings here and load them onto your device so that when you load up that device on CDJ 2000 Nexus decks, it asks you, do you want to load in your preferences basically? So for example, one of the things I normally change on a CDJ is the pitch range because if I'm on a lower pitch range, i.e. plus or minus six, it's a bit more precise. So if I change the tempo range here to plus or minus six, I'd also want master tempo to be on usually because I want the key to be locked of my tracks. So if I activate master tempo, quantize on, I might want that if I'm going to be doing loops so that it snaps my loop points to the grid markers. Sync, I personally don't want on. You know, you might be a syncing DJ and you might want that on, so it's going to automatically sync tracks for you. And another cool feature here is the auto cue level. So you can change at what level it detects the auto cue point, which is the first cue point it would set for you when you go to a new track. But one really cool thing you can do here is if you set 
this to first memory queue, what that means is when you load up a track that's got a memory queue saved, i.e. one of those 10 queue points that appear under memory, it will automatically load to that queue point rather than setting a queue point at the very beginning of the track. So it might be that you've set lots of queue points on the first beat that you want to queue in from. If you have this first memory queue option, it will automatically load the track to that queue point and it works with loops as well. So if, you, if you've gone here and set up a loop and then pressed memory, and it's one of these type of loops which you can normally access with the call buttons when you loaded up your track it would automatically load that loop so it's very useful if you wanted to start a track from a loop because it was a hip-hop tune and you wanted the first four bars of the instrumental or whatever reason it may be so that's what that option is regarding if I go back to this my settings here so basically you can change all of your different preferences to how you want your deck to behave and then what you need to do is if you go down to your device so if I click on my USB here, now you can see you get options for the key itself. So it's where you can change the background color of the key, you can name the device, you can change your categories and sort options and so on. So under my settings, what you would need to do is actually import those settings to here. So if you press control and click import my settings and say replace, it will actually load in the preferences here that you set under the my settings here so then it means when you've loaded that key up it will basically prompt you to load in your preferences for the deck and you'll see master tempo would become active and the tempo range would change it saves you time basically if you're getting on decks that aren't your own regularly it saves you a lot of time having to press various buttons you can just load all your settings in one go we mentioned in the last tutorial about the key being analyzed using mixed in key and how under this option here under settings if you've got enable key analysis on import ticked and write the id free tag it means it might overwrite key information that you've already got on your files so you could have that ticked if you didn't use mixed in key you could tick this and then when you analyze your music it will obviously detect the key and display it but it might be that you just want to detect a few because here i've got two that have already been through mixed in key but the other two at the top here haven't. So I might want to actually analyze these. So all I need to do is literally select them, press control, analyze keys. And then you can see it tells me the actual keys. So Recordbox doesn't use the mixed in key codes, unfortunately, but what it does do is it shows you tunes that are compatible harmonically as they appear in green on the CDJ. So if you select a track and then you're looking for another track, ones that are compatible with that track you've selected, will show up with a green light, so it's a kind of like traffic light system. So you can use record box key analysis to you know, work out which tracks are compatible with one another, really. One other cool feature that I use is setting the column option on your key itself. So if I go here under column, this is where you can display one thing next to the track name. So if you're searching under the track header, in record box encoded music, you can get one item from the ID3 tag to show up next to the track name. So key is an obvious one for me because if you select key here, basically what you need to do is press control on the key and go update collection. And then when you've loaded that key up, again, you're searching through tracks via like the track option, that will show up. So all the keys that you've analyzed will show up next to the track name. So it's really useful for finding harmonically compatible tracks. So hopefully these tips have been useful. Catch you next time.